This story, uh, there's been a couple of reports today, but very little on it. Perhaps you could tell us exactly what happened from the beginning. Sure, thanks. So, uh, round about this time last year, a um, student says to me uh, that she would now like to be known as a new name um, and referred to as a male. So, um, I raise a safeguarding concern as the immediate response for me. Um, I asked three questions. I asked, was there parental consent? Mm -hmm. uh, was the student making an informed decision? And was there a risk that the student could take cross-sex hormone treatment? So I'm just a humble mathematician. The safeguarding concern is a neutral act on my side. Um, it's not for me to investigate. It's not for me to make any judgments. But certainly my view mm. was that I should not support the student's wish to transition unless I have got clear parental consent and the parents are making an informed decision as well. Um, so I then went down to safeguarding after about a week and a half to see what had happened and, and what follow-up they had, they, they had made. And um, I was gobsmacked when safeguarding said that they were not going to speak to the parents about this. But is it not the law that the schools have to speak to the parents? I, I would have thought so, yeah. Uh, there's the, uh, the Parental Responsibility Act, um, which says that the parents are responsible for the naming of the child. Yes. And any change to the name of the, of the child, the student was 17, so therefore under 18, therefore a child. Yes. So, yeah, the law is that um, the school and the teachers cannot change a, a student's name. So how did we get from you raising these issues in terms of safeguarding to you being dismissed? Sure. So there's a number of things that, that started uh, building up uh, uh, along the, the, the route there. Um, so... The, the, the response from the college to say was they were not going to speak to the parents. Um, and I said, well, you know, what do we know about the other issues? And they said, well, the student can go to counselling if, if she wants. Um, I, I say I was gobsmacked. I tried to plead with them that this was potentially a really dangerous issue. And, I, and you know, they, they wouldn't, wouldn't move forward. So I go back to the classroom um, day, day by day. And I, I now find myself in an extremely difficult position. So I now know that the college are actively not going to seek parental consent. Um, I know that with the trans affirmative policy in the college, then for me to use, as they like to call it, the dead name, mm. not dead, obviously, but to use her birth name, that I would be accused of transphobia. But to, uh, to use her new name, I would then be encouraging a social transition without parental consent. So I'm left in a difficult position yes. in the classroom. I try to manage it as best as I can. Sort of avoid names a altogether. Avoid any name yeah. all, altogether and say, you know, yeah, how do feel about that kind yeah. of thing? And, yeah. and try to be as gentle and supportive and polite as I, as I possibly could in, in the nearly impossible circumstances that I had found myself in. So the, 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 the things uh, progress along. We then, um, about a week after the uh, safeguarding referral, there's a maths competition, a female maths competition. Um, and I'm encouraging all the girls in the class to have a go. Yes. Um, you know, I'm a mathematician. You know, I like to do maths. I like to encourage my students to do the same as well. And um, <coughs> the student puts a hand up at the back of the class and says, can I still enter the competition? I said, of course you can, because you're a girl. Girls competition, and I put her birth name up on the, the board, yes. along with the other girls that, that wanted to do so. And I, I subsequently get accused of dead naming her by, by the college for, for, Even for, for doing Even though she was the one who asked to be involved to in the competition? In, in, the, in the girls competition, yeah. So, that, I mean, this, this all raises a number of issues, doesn't it? Because in terms of teaching staff and students as well, mm -hmm. it kind of imposes an ideological worldview on people. It says that, you, you know, for, for the vast majority of us, we use pronouns to denote biological sex. That's the yep. way that we yep. use the language. That's the way that most, the vast majority of people use the language. Mm -hmm. but, but, but when they are saying that you must change that, you must use it in order to denote gender identity as opposed to biological sex, that is an imposition. It's, it's verging on compelled speech, isn't it? Completely, yeah, yeah. And for me, as a teacher, you know, I teach maths. We teach logic, we teach reason. Mm. Yeah, that's why I went into teaching. And I think if I, have, um, if I am forced to uh, support some idea of, of fantasy, basically, the question then is, well, what's the point of actually teaching at all? Yes. You know, what's the point of teaching reason and ration and argument if as soon as you have a challenge, you, you do nothing? You, you, you... Do you think this is this a widespread problem with schools at the moment? And are they, you know, bypassing certain legal obligations when it comes to 
uh, parental care. Yeah, this is clearly a huge problem across the country. It's a massive problem in the college that, um, that I was at, Swindon New College. Um, yeah, I'm obviously not there now, so I don't know how many students are transitioning now. But yes. I hear anecdotally there's a significant number of, of primarily female students wanting to transition. Yes, so uh, how do we tackle this insofar as if people are accused of transphobia or hate whenever mm. they raise any kind of objection to this, then that, that puts us in a bind because also, uh, automatically it suggests that there shouldn't be a discussion. Here. Yeah, the, the, whole, the whole ethos of this movement is to accuse people who, who question it of transphobia. That's the way this organisation, this movement, actually works. I think what, you know, what I think needs to be done is this needs to be considered point blank, period, as a safeguarding issue. Right. That as soon as a student is, 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 uh, is, is looking to change her gender or her name, it's a safeguarding issue and the schools and the education system should immediately look at it down that route. What we've seen with the Tavistock Clinic and the way in which the Tavistock Clinic has been closed as a result of the CAS report, that actually there, there are clear dangers, mm. uh, that this isn't, this isn't good for child welfare, uh, that people can be fast-tracked onto puberty blockers and then onto cross-sex hormones. Uh, a lot of the time it's because of other issues, because of yep. autism or even just homosexuality. Sometimes we're just dealing with gay kids who are struggling with their sexuality. Yeah, it can be a wide range of things. It can, yeah, and it's not for me to judge what those things are. Yes. Yeah, I, I raise a safeguarding issue. I expect the school to sit down with the parents and, and, and any medical practitioners and, and, and to work a solution out and, and, and to get down to what the nub of the problem is. It's not for me to do. Were you surprised when you were dismissed? I was this? gobsmacked. I was absolutely, absolutely gobsmacked. It, it was really completely out, out the blue. Is the purpose of that to dissuade other teachers from raising objections? It's, it's clearly the purpose. Um, not only... Um, did I raise that safeguarding concern? But I actually raised a second safeguarding concern as well in the college. Um, in some ways, this one is even more serious. And this related to a trans activist teacher who is actively transitioning students. Now, I don't know how far she got with the transitioning. Um, By that, you mean socially transitioning or encouraging social transitioning? Well, well in, in the presentation that she gave, she gave us warnings for things that we need to look at, that, that young students who are transitioning might well be on cross-sex hormones, and, and, and in her words, they might be showing signs of early menopause. So, so she's clearly getting them down onto the cross-sex hormone pathway. So this is, this is a key point, isn't it, that a, a number of teachers now are activists first mm. and teachers second. Yeah. You tend to see this more in America, and you think this is an American problem. But from what you're describing, actually, there's a problem here as well. This is happening here. Right. And, uh, then, and then to take a stand against that, you end up being dismissed end of, yeah, and accused exactly. of yeah. being yeah. hateful. Yeah. So, I, I, you know, so because I wouldn't use the pronouns without parental consent, because I'd raised questions at a training session about the risk of, um, of, of basically a false positive mm. that we encourage a student to transition, how do we know that, 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 that that's a basically a, a not a false positive? Because I raised those two issues, then I was accused of transphobia. Do you think that's why there has been so little discussion on this issue? Because eventually schools are surely going to have to come to terms with something here. Yeah, it's, it, it's, um, it's an extraordinary situation. Um, I would never have thought when I came into teaching you know, nearly 18 years ago that we'd end up with students coming out of school unable to tell the difference between a male and a female. And it's almost now as if this thing has now developed such a powerful momentum that, it, that it's difficult to stop it, that the schools themselves cannot stop it. It's almost like, you know, to quote Macbeth, that you've waded in, in blood so far that it's more tiresome to turn back than to continue. So it seems to me, this is just merely my speculation, that the management of certain schools, certainly the, the new college that I was at, have been pushing this transgender model as a model for their diversity so hard over, over, over recent years that for them now to turn around and say, well, actually, we've made a mistake and that these people are now suffering harm and damage, it's too much of a liability for them. So the easiest thing for management to protect their jobs is to keep this momentum going and pretend nothing is happening. That's a very interesting point, because I note since the uh, CAS report, I haven't seen many of the people who have been promoting gender identity ideology admit that they made a mistake mm. and that actually the practices at the Tavistock, what the whistleblowers were, were warning about mm -hmm. and were ignored, uh, that all of this had been a mistake and that they have said, actually, we got it wrong. No one seems to want to admit that there might be potential dangers for young people and particularly yeah. young gay people. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and, and the, the evidence has been there. It's been there right for, you know, for years and years. There was a, a study done in Sweden in uh, 2010. Yes. Um, and it was a devastating uh, critique. It, it, well, what it showed was that the risk of suicide 
for female to male transitioners was 40 times greater than normal background. 40 times greater. Mm. And we've got schools in this country you know, encouraging students to, to go down, down these pathways. It is absolutely beyond me to understand how we've ended up in, into this um, situation. And so what will happen to you next? What action are you taking? What do you hope to achieve? Yeah, so we'll be uh, taking action against the school. Uh, for wrongful dismissal? For wrongful dismissal and for discrimination as, as well. So uh, working with the solicitors and barristers on that at the moment. Um, I'll be launching a, a crowd funder. Um, we're just getting the barristers' case together at the moment. So once that's in place, uh, that, then, then we'll start the crowdfunding to start taking it forward. And this could really be a significant case insofar as you won't be the only one who is mm. going through this and certainly won't be the only one who's going to go through this kind of thing. Exactly. Yeah. And actually we yeah. need these kind of precedents yeah. to ward it off, don't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No question about it. And uh, yeah, th this, th in this particular case, you know, I've been as, 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 as rigid as I can. You know, we've, we've, you know, I've gone down the safeguarding, I've, I've raised the safeguarding in relation to my student um, and I've raised the safeguarding in relation to the, um, the trans activist teachers. And the school has done nothing at all mm. in terms of investigating either of those, those safeguarding concerns. It, on, on, the, on the safeguarding concern I raised with my student, the, um, the, the answer I got back from the, the college when I, when I put my grievance appeal through was that they did not need to inform the parents because it was only a name change. I mean, that right. was just absurd. It was just absolutely absurd, even though you know, I was being um, dismissed and suspended for transphobia.